Hi again and guys and welcome to another custom but inspired by real life special projects build for GT6 and as you'll have seen from the title of course this is a GT1 style build for the ASL or Autobax Garaya, a Super GT car. It's pretty good at the GT300 level but I've always thought that this car has much more of a Le Mans GT1 style appearance, especially from the back. It's similar to the CLK GTR, the 911 GT1, the Elise GT1, etc. And since this car can be tuned up to a far higher power level than you'd probably expect it to, not far off 700 horsepower in fact, it got me to wondering, what if I actually turn this into a GT1 car? Could it actually compete? at least at certain PP levels, with actual GT1 machines. Not necessarily the best of them or beat all of them, but can it at least compete with them? So, I built the car, and then I took it out to the Le Mans with the lowest possible downforce settings to really see how the car could do on racing hards so it doesn't really have any advantages. The car is typically known for its handling on tighter circuits. The Le Mans doesn't allow for that advantage, you need straight line speed. So how did it fare? Well at the 600pp level, which is where this build sits, it did a 348 lap. Now I'm certain that that's not the quickest a car like this could go, there are definitely quicker drivers than me, but it's not a slow lap. The problem is though I still had no point of comparison, so what I did is I took the Nissan R390, which is of course an actual GT1 machine, I brought it up to the same weight as this car and reduced it down to that same 600pp level. I also optimised the R390 to make it as quick as possible, low downforce etc, and it was 3 seconds slower than this Garaya. Now the R390 isn't the quickest of GT1 cars and it's certainly not the quickest of 600pp cars, but it just goes to show that this car does have potential. Something that can go 3 seconds quicker than an R390 is certainly no slouch, especially on a track which requires that kind of straight line speed. So, as far as the visuals, you can of course go for any colour you want, this is totally up to you, I've gone for black as you can see, but as I said, go for whatever you want. And incidentally, if you don't want to use the base model, if you want to use the full liveried normal version, this tune works exactly the same for that car as well. So, as we always do, we'll go over first of all to the tune setup and then of course take it out to a racetrack to elaborate a bit more on how the car performs. Now at the 600pp level, which as I said is the level that I tuned this one to, you can see it's got some pretty good numbers. You are running the kind of numbers, well, close to them at least, of an actual 90s GT1 car. Around 600 horsepower, around 1100 kilos. It's got a little bit more weight than that, but unfortunately there's nothing we can do about that. Now, one of the advantages that this car has is that most, if not all, GT1s and LMPs cannot have anywhere near this kind of power at the 600 pp level. You have to reduce the power so much on those cars down to, say, the 400 level to allow them to drop this far. The other option is of course that you have to increase their weight a lot which completely negates the whole point of using those vehicles. So this car strikes a very happy medium between the two and due to the fact that it is a slightly lower class vehicle they do allow you to have more power in it so it could potentially be useful in that regard. Now I've gone for racing hard tyres as you can see. As far as suspension I've lowered the ride height to 55 front and rear Springs we've just rounded off to 1450 and 1950, the dampers to 5 with 3 on anti-roll, neutral camber and tow. We'll come back to the gearbox in just a second as we often do. I tried a few different diff settings on this particular car and as always everyone's driving style is a little bit different so mess around, find what works best for you, maybe if you already know your preferred settings just slap those on there instead, but for me personally I found Halfway on initial torque and full on acceleration and braking was pretty much perfect for my driving style. And as far as power, we do have an oil change, so you need to bear that in mind. We've got the Stage 3 engine tune, high RPM turbo, and then reduce the power down to 88.6%. 
On the Le Mans, in particular, I would recommend the lowest downforce, because it gives you around another 15 miles per hour of top speed. It'll do around 180 with full downforce. It'll do 195 quite easily on this current setting. And that's pretty good for a car of its type with that kind of power at 600 pp. 195 miles per hour is not bad at all, and incidentally, that is quicker than the R390 was going at this same build level. Now finally for the gearbox, it's not a full-on top speed tune, but obviously you want that top speed as well, and personally I think that the gearbox settings for this are pretty much perfect. They give you a little bit of draft potential, and for me personally, they just work really well. If you want to change them, go ahead, but I would recommend these. I've gone for an auto setting of 205, then individual gears of 2.9, 1.9, 1375, 1075, 875 and 725 with a final drive of 4. Now as I already said that allows you to do 195 miles per hour with the lower downforce setting and that does also leave you a little bit of draft potential before you actually hit the red line. You can get this car probably up around 210, maybe 220 in slipstream before you actually start to really hit the red line. So more than enough really at that PP level for an actual race car. So that's it for the build overall and definitely change stuff around. That's what these tunes are designed for, to be canvases for you guys to work from. But now let's actually take it out to the track to see what it can do. Now, I already mentioned the fact, of course, that for me personally, in my testing, this was a quicker vehicle at the 600pp level on this track, of course, than the Nissan R390. Now, how it compares to something more upmarket, say a Pascalo or a CLK LM or something like that, well, that remains to be seen. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is the best 600pp machine. It may not even be in the top 10. But what it is is competitive enough, it can certainly give those actual GT1 cars, at least at this specific PP level, a great run for their money. Now on other tracks I would recommend changing things here and there, such as higher downforce fairly obviously, or different tyres, but overall it has great handling as far as I'm concerned. If you push it, it will wheel spin of course, but that goes without saying, it's quicker than it feels in a straight line, in particular for top end acceleration, and overall it's just a nice all round package. So if you decide to use this build on your Garaya, obviously I hope you find it fun and competitive, and if you'd like to keep up with other builds like this, both real and fictional, you can subscribe down below. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.